This garage is a complete mess. <laughs> I don't even know why it's so messy. So, in typical fashion, we're gonna continue working on the G-Wagon. We got a cup holder. <laughs> um, so as of right now, uh, I did a full paint correction. Uh, this trim was falling off, replaced it, put the AMG one back on. This one was completely missing, put a new one on. So, if you didn't know, this car is really freaking expensive and it only comes with one cup holder. You see that, Yosh? <laughs> Just one cup holder. <laughs> so this is an aftermarket piece that goes right here. So this is just a quick tutorial on how to install it and what it looks like. It looks like it's from Japan, MHG001. I'm not really sure if that's the brand or if that's the model. But everything is in Japanese, so let's see. How do you do this? Is there anything in English? So apparently in the box, there's this piece and it's the bottom piece. What you do is clean this up, which I did for the most part. Get any sort of dust particles out of there. And apply this, press down. Okay. And it looked like the tape, the double-sided tape that they used was pretty sturdy. So there we go, that's on. So out of the box, it comes like this. You're supposed to pull off this top portion. And if you look on the bottom, this adheres to this area right here. So you just slide it right on. Uh, uh, there we go. The next piece that comes in this kit is this top mount portion. So I believe it goes somewhere back here and adheres to here. Next, you're going to use these two black screws and make sure it does not go into the vent. <laughs> I think that's going to be the hardest thing. So, hold my breath and just put this in and screw it in. Okay, so far so good. Okay, almost in the clear. Okay, my butt is no longer clenched. <laughs> so that's on, and I'm gonna get a screwdriver and screw it in just a little bit more tightly. The next step is to put the original top portion back on, slides over just like so, and then you screw in right here and right here. So as you can see, those screws are now in, and the final piece is this rubber portion that has some double-sided tape, so you just want to slide it in, which I'm doing a really bad job of. And there we go. Okay, so that is all in. Feels pretty sturdy. I don't want to move it too much while the glue is, or the tape is drying, so let's give it a go and see if it fits a Venti drink. Is this Venti or is this? Yeah, Venti. Okay, does it fit? Uh, oh, wow, it fits. Nice. Now, the design is kind of dumb. It's right in front of the vent. So if you have a heater, it's going to be heating up your drink or cooling down your drink, whichever. Um, but let's close the door. Hey. Not bad. Ah. So I guess that's a review and a install for this MHG001 for Mercedes G-Class. Um, it reminds me a lot of the E90 series cup holders that are right in front of the vents. So nothing new there. It just kind of sucks that it has one cup holder like who decided that? I mean, I guess when this car first came out, Starbucks and, I don't know, I guess Americans really weren't interested in G-Wagons. 
But you know, I mean, I bet the Shavi Ron freaking drank tea in his G Wagon. So why not freaking put another cup holder? <laughs> Whatever. Um, some places online you see this for like three hundred dollars. Um, I think we got it off of eBay for like a hundred and forty. That is crazy for a cup holder, but. I think it's one of the most important modifications on this car. Truth be told, if you only have one cup holder on the front, what's the point? So we're taking this thing on a trip. How does it do? You can fit a lot of luggage. This is pretty spacious. Still got ample room. I like taking this car to Vegas, but I think this is going to be a lot more fun. Always got to do a cold start in this car. <laughs> you may be wondering what the car seat looks like in here. There's some room. Nova, are you comfy? No. <laughs> okay, whatever. Well, we're primarily going to be in comfort mode, um, so I guess this is technically the eco mode, so we'll see how it does. Oh my gosh, this guy means business. You see that nightdress? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the owner right there. He looks almost in his mid-60s and he's driving a boosted Hayabusa. So, just entered the freeway. <laughs> uh, currently 11.9 miles to the gallon, it's 60 degrees outside, so we'll see how it does. We're going to drive for at least two and a half hours, so it's going to be a long trip. Um, so, Good job. when driving on the freeway, I feel like this car shines a lot more so than on normal streets. Uh, you just feel so solid, you don't really have to apply much gas, um, it revs pretty low, um, half of the time you're under 2000 RPM, so this engine really doesn't have to struggle. Um, steering, you have to put in input, but it's a lot less input than the Jeep uh, that we previously had, so, <laughs> so far so good. Um, I I don't typically use the eco mode on here because it's a start stop function but I'm gonna see if it helps with the miles to the gallon um, we filled up just last night and we put like 21 22 gallons so we'll see how it does so far we're up to 12.8 miles to the gallon we've been driving uh, 23 miles thus far um, with an average speed of 41, so um, hopefully it gets a little bit better. Wow, nice paint color on the Fox series. Sheesh. Uh, so we've been driving over an hour. We're up to 13.6 miles to the gallon. Let's go! <laughs> Jesse. 
Did you like Vegas? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. So, what's my overall opinion on this car? Um, it does amazing on the freeway. It does horrible on gas mileage. So we're in Nevada. Um, gas is a little bit cheaper. Um, emissions are a little bit different, but uh, we have maybe a quarter tank left, so we'll fill it up and see how much it takes. So you can play. That's one thing that I still can't get used to. <laughs> bruh, let's race. Let's race, bruh. Jeez. Food is so clean. close to home. We're doing uh, at least 14 miles to gallon now. I think that's a little bit better from when we first uh, drove down to Vegas. But overall, really pleased. I think the seats are just really comfortable. This is definitely a highway cruiser. Um, unless you're going like above 90, then I feel like the wind resistance is pretty strong. But I mean, I don't think you should be driving past 90 anyways in this kind of car. <laughs> Um, stay tuned, like and subscribe you guys. Uh, I know this G-Wagon content isn't really interesting for a lot of you, but I guess if there's anyone else who has a G-Wagon or is interested in getting one, um, I guess this is a comprehensive, like, real review, I guess. So, thanks you guys. Like and subscribe. <laughs>